This is the northern water snake, one of the four subspecies of the common water snake. They get that name because they are both common and they live in water, in semi-aquatic habitats. These guys can be found throughout most of the eastern half of the United States and they are very common throughout that range. They can be found in these semi-aquatic habitats like this river I am at here. They can also be found at ponds, some streams, lakes, things like that. That variety of habitat makes them one of the most common snakes in the eastern half of the U.S. The Nerodia is the genus of water snakes. This specific one, the common water snake, is Nerodia cypedon. The specific subspecies, the northern water snake, is Nerodia cypedon cypedon, or cypedon, however you pronounce it. To find them, you can just walk along the bank of that aquatic habitat. They'll usually be basking on rocks in the sun, depending on what time of day it is. Sometimes they'll take refuge underneath those rocks. So you can flip some rocks, walk along the bank, Hopefully you'll find some of these guys. In this particular area I am in, these guys are crazy abundant. I just start walking up the bank and they're coming out of everywhere. Coming off of rocks, coming off of low-lying branches over the water. They'll even just swim right into me as they're coming downstream. Because this river current is decently strong. So as with most species in the Nerodia genus, he's very defensive. I like to use the term defensive rather than aggressive because they're not out to get you, they're just defending themselves. These guys are primarily diurnal, so if you're looking for them, you want to look during the day. Um, they can become nocturnal during the night and super hot days of the year, but generally they stay diurnal and they are both ambush predators and active foragers. So during the day, they will be either basking or waiting for their food, to, waiting to ambush their prey. Uh, but most of the time, they are active foragers searching for their prey, which consists mostly of fish and frogs. When they're younger, they'll eat some invertebrates, but fish and amphibians are generally their main diet. Predators of these snakes can include uh, birds of prey like hawks or heron, as well as snapping turtles and other larger animals like that. When they're young, they have a lot more predators. Even large frogs, such as American bullfrogs, will eat small snakes. As an adult, they're kind of in the middle on the food chain. They eat a lot of things, several things eat them. These northern water snakes will grow in between two to four feet. So this is definitely an adult, probably about two feet. So on the smaller size of a full grown adult, the females grow larger than males, as with most snake species. Their scales are also keeled, which means there is a little ridge going down the length of each scale. This gives them buoyancy in the water and helps them maneuver in the water. This individual is pretty dull colored. Uh, he was more vibrant when he was wet, but the pattern's not very easy to see on him. Younger individuals have a very vibrant pattern usually, and sometimes they can keep that up through adulthood, and those are the really cool ones to find. I love finding those really big really cool, really vibrant uh, adult water snakes. So I say they're defensive, and they have multiple defense mechanisms. Their first one is to puff up and make themselves really big, make, make their head really triangular. This makes them look bigger and it makes them look venomous. And they are often mistaken for venomous snakes. Second, they will, if grab, uh, spray musk and poop everywhere. And that does not smell nice. Garter snakes and water snakes, from my experience, have some of the worst smelling musk. It does not smell good, but I have learned to overcome it because I have caught so many of these guys. As a last resort, they will bite. Um, like I said, these guys are a little bit more defensive. They tend to bite when picked up. Most of the ones I pick up will give me a nip or two, but it doesn't hurt that bad. However, sometimes it can look like it hurts pretty bad because they have anticoagulant in their saliva, so your blood does not clot, it does not stop bleeding for about up to an hour even. Usually that does not pose any threat, it just makes it look cooler. Now they're usually a brownish, grayish, tannish color. Sometimes they can have a vibrant red and that's also really cool to find. But usually they have that dark background color with those bands across. And on the front, about the front third, the anterior third of their body, they have bands that go all the way across and around their body. But as you get to the latter thirds of their body, um, they will have more squarish markings, and those markings are alternating on the top and the sides. They're not just bands going across. That is one way to distinguish them between cottonmouths and copperheads. Snakes are usually oviparous, which means they lay eggs. But most species, if not all, in the genus Nerodia, including this one, are ovoviviparous. This means that they have eggs that develop and hatch inside of them, and then they will bear that live young. 
This is unusual for snakes, but common for these common snakes. So that's the northern water snake. I'm gonna go have fun and find some more and let this guy go. I don't know. Why do you want a branch? Then he wants to make a fish trap. <laughs> wow, look at that. He caught a branch. Yeah, reel it in. Nice catch. Oh, he killed it. Look at that. What a find.